Hello everybody, this is Skate Skywolf doing a introductory guide to Fortnite Save the World. Save the World is a cooperative uh, PvE storm fighting adventure that you can do in Fortnite versus the Battle Royale, which is your PvP mode. So instead of going to Battle Royale, you're going to click Save the World. Now in here, you're going to start off, this is going to focus on missions, what you do in-game um, outside of this squad or uh, management view, I guess you could say. Now, number one, first way to get into a mission, you can just log in and you have play right here and you can click play now. Now, one thing you want to double check, your default on this is going to be um, public. You can check your privacy. You can do a public game, a friend's game, or a private game. I'm doing private right now just for this video. I almost always will play public because having a few extra players is always very helpful. And sometimes, depending on the players, they may also give you high-level items. They may give you materials you need for crafting, etc. Some players are really nice like that. The community so far, from what I've experienced, is actually really good. Um, so, uh, so again, your option is play, play now, boom, jumps right into a game. Before doing that, though, I recommend you check your quests, namely your daily quests, scouting cities all together now, and destroy garden gnomes. Um, the other way to kick off a game is through the map. In the map, you have a couple of different options based on your um, home base level, which is here, home base power. Sorry, I misspoke there. Um, the higher your home base power, the more areas you unlock, the more missions and the different missions, the different kinds of loot that you'll receive. So Stonewood is a 1 to 19. Plankerton is a 15 to 60, 46, which you also have to do main mission quests to unlock these areas. Um, the next one, I believe this is the next, no, not Twin Peaks. Um, Candy Valley is 40 to 70, and then Twin Peaks is 70 to 100. You also currently, during the holidays, and I don't know if this mode will stay or not, I assume it will because I think it's pretty popular, is Survive the Storm, which is a recommended power level of 5 to 76, which is funny because you come in here and then it says 15, and your options are 15 or 15 um, for your power levels. This is a... Um, just what it says, survive the storm for three days. You're gonna go in, you're gonna build a generator, and then you're gonna defend that generator. Um, on the three day, you have two generators. On the seven day, you have four generators. You have to b protect all four, or all two. Um, seven day is obviously very long. Those games can run 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how much time you spend during the day, as you can skip the day portion. Um, but I don't wanna to get too much into that. Just suffice it to say, make sure you have plenty of crafting materials and anything else you might need before you go into one of those modes. Um, back, sorry, back. All right, so we're gonna go to Stonewood. I'm gonna select a random mission here just to, to demonstrate a few things. Um, all right, so here is your home base. This is where your current home is. You can click on it, you can go there anytime you want, build up some defenses. Um, put in new traps, change your, your, your base layout, etc. You can also store things. It's kind of like your permanent storage. Um, you can go there and store items as well. Now from here, you have a couple different ways of running a mission. You can pick a specific mission. For example, I can click here, I click select, and I can launch. Or I can go to play with others, and I can click select. Now this gives you a couple of option, options. You can do quest progression. And it says just what it is. Team up with players to progress your campaign. Uh, quick play. Um, it's just going to throw you into a game. And then custom um, lets you kind of select a power level that's below uh, or at, or I guess if you're at the right level, but basically below what your current home base power is. Now, if I was at 15, 15 would be my highest. Um, once I hit 19, 19 would be my highest, and then I can drop it down. I don't know why anybody would really do that, because if you want to play a specific mission, you would probably just click on it. But it's an option. Um, one thing of note, your recommended power level for craft progression here is 15. Um, quick play could be anywhere between a level 1 and a level 19, so keep that in mind. Um, if you're a level 18, for example, like I am, you may end up on a quest that's for level 1. You still get your bonuses, though, as well as your mission rewards. It's just you don't get as much. All right, so let me go ahead and we're going to head here. Um, it's going to drop me into a lobby by myself, again, not playing with any other players. You get two minutes to make some changes. Uh, to wait for other players to queue up before you launch, or you can immediately launch. Uh, you can also click on any one of these plus icons and invite a friend if you have a friends on your friends list. I think I have one, but he's not currently online. Another thing you can double check is your gadgets. 
and your hero squad. You can click edit, you can edit your hero squad and modify it as you see fit for your mission. You can also double check your gadgets. I only have the two, so I'm gonna leave those two alone. Show head accessory. Oh, wow, I didn't realize that was an option to be turned on and off. Okay, and you can turn your head accessories on and off if you feel like it. I like the hat, I think it's kind of cool. Kind of an Indiana Jonesy look. Um, and then you launch. And here you'll see a basic overview of your mission. Fight the storm, find the target, place the atlas, fortify and defend. You'll end up probably doing this one a lot because it's fairly quick depending on the players um, and how much they want to scavenge at the start. Scavenging is very crucial. Um, that's where you get all, a lot of your crafting materials. You can find various weapons in certain um, in chests and safes and such. Now, we're getting in here. I'm going to go to, sorry, objectives real quick. You can see what you're doing. Fight the storm. It shows you where you're at and your level and what day you're on. And your objectives. Search for the atlas. Uh, two swirls. Uh, it's a, sorry, that's a different mission. Um, you can double check your badges. Um, these badges are locked, but they are possible. So as you progress, they will pop up and they will give you bonuses to your loot chest at the end of the game. Um, you can also check your scores as and I believe if there's other players in the game, it will also show them. I don't really, I guess if you're being competitive for some reason. And then here you'll get your mission objectives and your rewards. Um, again, you can check your squad, but you can't change anything, but you can just kind of double check and see what you have available. Check your inventory. Um, as you can see right here, it's kind of hard to read. I do apologize for that. I can't control that color. I have 36 out of 60 in my backpack. 50 is your base backpack, and you may have to delete items, drop items, etc. as you go. So you have your ranged weapons. Um, I always recommend having two different weapon uh, ammo types. In this case, I have light ammo and energy cells, as well as a melee weapon. Um, you can use your harvesting tool for melee range damage, but it doesn't do nearly as much as an actual melee weapon will. Two, double check your ammo availability. You can just click here and it will show you energy cells. I have 1,840 or 14, sorry, I misspoke, and I can carry up to 3,000. Now, if I want to make some more, I can just double click here and I can queue up a bunch. Or from this view, I can select my weapon and I can hold down R, which will also craft uh, them. And you can go up to a uh, queue of nine. At that point, it won't let you queue anymore until it's crafted one. But while this is happening, I can start running around and look for stuff and so on and so forth. Uh, check your traps. On this side is tra traps that are available. On this side are traps you can craft. Um, as well as their power levels. This uh, lightning indicator and the number is their power level. So a level 15 is going to be stronger than a level 1. Um, same goes for um, melee weapons as well as ranged weapons. Um, for example, this is a 64, it's my strongest ranged weapon. Sorry, 46, I am dyslexic, I do apologize for that. And again, you can scroll down through and you can check out your various weapons. Now these ones are options that I can craft, I do have a schematic for, but I am missing a material. Um, in this case, silver ore for this one, and some nuts and bolts for these two. Which is weird, that these don't require nuts and bolts. Oh yeah, some duct tape to uh, make an assault rifle, that sounds really safe, right? Um, and, and then you have your crafting materials. Uh, these crafting materials are gathered um, from the game as you go, from scavenging, from destroying objects. Um, a very important note is uh, nuts and bolts are huge. These are important to your ammo. And when you click on this, just a single click, it will pop up and it will tell you what you need to craft it. In this case, it is wood, some metal, and some nuts and bolts. And that goes for all of these. Which, why it's only, oh, because, oh, wow, this one actually, cells actually require bacon as well, um, which is kind of funny, and batteries. The one. Keep searching. Uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought, because uh, the bacon threw me off, man, it's weird. I, just, I know, like, bacon was in the game, I didn't realize it was part of the crafting material for, for your energy cells, so that was kind of, kind of random. Um, so if you get a lot of these, for example, this, this stringy twine, which I think is mostly used for traps, um, and as you mouse over these, you will see on the right side here, right here, or sorry, right here, that it shows you the crafting material as well, but it doesn't show you how many you have. 
and that's where when you click on it it will actually pop up the left side here is how many I have this is how many it requires uh, something of note like right here this is craftable I do not have the 8 blasting power or sorry 15 blasting blast powder um, so I can go here and I can double click it and I can craft it as long as I have the materials which I do so I'll do one of those right now and that will actually give me five of them the other option is you can actually just craft this weapon I'm not going to because I don't want to use the materials um, and I already have one over here it's a little weaker but I don't use it a whole lot because it's the same weapon uh, ammo type as as my primary uh, assault rifle um, and it will actually craft the prerequisite materials as long as you have the materials to craft this. So in this case, it's coal and rough ore. I have plenty of rough ore and coal, as you see, so you don't necessarily have to do that. All right, um, scavenging notes. So here, we're going to put up a, a wall. And I always recommend, whenever possible, to check um, roof areas. Uh, usually you will end up getting a lot of better items when you're in the roof areas. Um, when you're swinging, initially, I did not know this for a while, um, so I swing and then I get a critical hit indicator or a weak point, and that's what this is. So my base damage is 45. When I hit this weak point, I do 90. Hit weak point, 90. In that case, I was intentionally just left clicking, um, kind of hoping to see if I can find like a chest in here or something, but I'm not, oh well. Um, and then you can loot all of these. Um, you can join a game and you can get materials, such as all the stuff I'm gathering right now, and um, they will go with you. What will not go with you is, uh, if you do not complete the mission, that is, is any survivors, um, any progress you make on your quests, daily quests, etc., does not go with you either. But but anything you get on this page will go with you when you leave the game, whether you finish the mission or not. Same thing, any um, traps, ammo, etc. that you may pick up uh, will go with you whether you finish the game or not. Also, in this view, um, I'm not going to do it, but if, for example, I did not want this anymore, I have the option to recycle it, and it will give me some of the crafting materials back. It's not a full crafting material back, so I don't recommend it for items that you create yourself if you think you will use it at some point. If you're like, yeah, I created it and I used it when I was leveling up, but now I'm a higher level and I'm not going to use it, don't worry about it. Just get rid of it. If you need the inventory space, if you don't, don't worry about it. Just hold on to it. You can also, such as these M80s, which are not recyclable, just drop them. You can do this with the X key or by coming down here and clicking drop. And it will ask you how many you want to drop. In this case, I don't use them ever, so I'm just going to drop them all. Uh, another thing, I think I mentioned this before, uh, nuts and bolts are huge. Make sure you collect plenty of them. Destroying cars will give you a small number of uh, nuts and bolts. You'll see it pop up, two nuts and bolts. Uh, so make sure you keep those in mind. Let's see... I think if there's anything else specific that I really wanted to cover during this video. Um, scavenging, I covered chests, I covered saves, I covered your weapons, uh, your gadgets. I don't know why it's it's uh, numbered the way it is, but it's kind of frustrating because like I gotta hit five to do my, my bull charge, but then I gotta go all the way to the other side of my keyboard for nine to call in a missile strike. Which I'm going to do it just anyways to... Why not? Um, unlike the PvP mode, you cannot damage buildings and such by shooting them. I will show you. This is not doing any damage to it at all. So, throwing grenades and such at buildings, at structures, does not damage them. Please keep that in mind. Some players are like, what's going on? I'm shooting it. It's not doing anything. Yeah, you can't damage it, buddy. Appreciate that. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm, just, I'm gonna try and get up here real quick. Well, I'm not gonna try to. I'm going to. Um, so like, here's here's something to keep in mind. Right now, I'm gonna place this, and it shows you your hit points. You can edit it. It shows you how much materials you need. You can even rotate it around if you wanted to, versus you know actually like physically moving. The other thing you see is the pipes are outlined in yellow. That means when I place this, it will destroy them. So for example, if I wanted that metal, I should have freaking I should have harvested that first. Here is a pelican case looking object. They usually have decent items, sometimes a weapon. 
for a trap. I got a weapon and a trap out of that one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and talk to her. When you talk to a survivor, you also get a reward. Which, again, can be crafting materials, it can be occasionally a weapon. Um, the variety of nature of objects that can be in those. So always check around, look for your stuff to harvest. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get him out the way. And I woke up a couple other ones, that's something you gotta keep in mind. Uh, just because you only see one doesn't mean there only is one. And now, um, you can also not just go through the roof, you can also check on the roof. Um, I don't think this one's gonna have it. Ugh. Yeah, but certain buildings have flat roofs and they will have chests on them. Usually it's in the bigger city portions. Um, the higher up you go, kind of. Actually, over there, we'll go over there. That one looks like it might have something. Um, you can get chests, um, safes, etc. So again, it all depends on, you know, where you're at in your gameplay um, and what exactly it is you're trying to get your hands on. So for example, you know, here we have uh, the blue go. Hey, look at that, perfect. And a chest. Um, go ahead and grab that up. And you come over here and then you have a chest, see? So that's why it's always a good idea to actually go up on the roofs and um, even dig into buildings that may have an attic. As you can see, I got a shotgun, a couple other things. Um, we're gonna go ahead and go right down through this roof. Um, you can take fall damage, so keep that in mind. And see, now we're inside the roof, um, which this one doesn't really have anything too spectacular. I could I could uh, search these, but I'm not going to. And then you can continue going down if you wanted to, such as I am here. Um, these have mission items for me, which gives it the exclamation mark on the mini-map, as well as gives them this orangey outline. It has a freezer unit. It's part of a mission that I have, that I've had for a while. I haven't finished it yet. Um, basements. Basements are like attics. They can also have really good stuff. Ammo cans, um, chests, and um, ammo cans, boom, chests, safes, etc. Sometimes though, they got nothing. It's garbage. But if you're in big time scavenging mode, I need resources, I need resources, it's always worth checking out. Um, I believe that covers everything I really wanted to cover. Um, remember when you're building uh, that you can select things and you can modify the way it looks. The game will teach you this in the tutorial, but just if for any reason um, you forgot that during, because uh, you took a break or whatever, there are different ways of doing it. Um, some things of note here real quick. When you are doing um, the ramp up and you're editing it, you actually will select the area you're starting with. So I'm gonna start here on the right and you'll actually hold down the cursor and that will determine um, the style of ramp. So that was a to the left and then I can actually, get, oops, sorry, I did that backwards. I gotta start all the way over. And then this will go up and turn back towards me as you can see, so it's 180 degrees. Um, also with the uh, cone, when you're editing this one, this actually determines whether it's up or whether it's down. So right now it's down, it'll create a small pyramid. Um, we'll go ahead and place it. Oops, sorry, that was not what I meant to do. We'll go ahead and place it. So now it's a pyramid, right? So we're gonna edit it, and we're gonna send all but the bottom corner up. So we create basically a V. And then we're gonna edit it again, and we're gonna do the opposite. So the far side is now down, and the close, closest three are up. Um, this just gives you another design option for your bases and your defenses and all that. There's just so much you can do. Uh, these are just a few items that I've found to be useful as I've played that I really was not aware of when I first started playing. As you go and you unlock skills, you also get a upgrade option. This increases the hit points, basically increasing the durability of the objects. In this case, it's 220 hit points. I upgrade once, it goes up to 495. And once this finishes, I can actually upgrade a third time currently, and it goes up to 762, 65, sorry. So, um, and as you can see, the appearance of the object changes as well. Um, like the stone one I really like because it looks a lot more medieval. Um, the higher the durability of the material you're placing, the longer it takes to build. So wood builds fastest, Stone builds second fastest, iron builds slowest. Again, you can upgrade it. This is the first upgrade. Kind of 
you kind of notice everything kind of lines up a little better. It's not quite as crooked. Um, again, hit points increase. Uh, let's see, come on, come on. Like I said, it takes a little while. And then I can upgrade again. And now it's even smoother with bigger rocks. Like pretty much everything is almost perfectly in line. Uh, it doesn't look as rough. And in this case, you actually get a very um, tower -y, castle tower look. Um, for the uh, for the third upgrade, it has a very the third upgrade for stone has a very castle look to it, which is great for if you want to make your um, storm shield bases look like an actual fort. So that way, when other players come in to join you, they see how how much time and effort and in this case, you know, resources you spent doing something that you probably spend very little time at, except when you're actually doing a quest on or a mission for. But hey, it's an option. And we're playing this game for fun, right? We're not playing it because, you know, we're crazy competitive like the PvPers are. Um, another item, uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave this mission. Uh, as it says, you'll lose quest progress. You do still keep your crafting materials. I've checked that a couple of times. Um, another thing to note is as you're going, you will get V funds from various missions, um, from your llamas, etc. I highly recommend if you play Battle Royale, you only spend your V funds in Battle Royale. As you will get mini loot llamas, um, I do not currently have one, but if I did, I would have a fourth option here for a mini loot llama um, that will give you pretty much everything you need as well, and they can upgrade. You can start with a base one, and you can go to a silver and a gold. Um, I believe your upgrade llamas will as well, which you can buy with the V loot. Um, you can also keep an eye out for, um, for what's the word I'm looking for? For specials, there we go, specials. Um, in this case, it's specifically melee uh, weapons, but it's 350 V uh, funds, but I don't use melee weapons, so I'm not going to do it. Obviously, I would never do that. Uh, that's a lot of V funds for a specific melee uh, style, which I guess if you were looking for something specific, um, it'd be worth it. Maybe if it was heroes, I would do it. But the other side of it, too, is um, I got, I think it was six, six llamas yesterday for the price of just over three. Um, Should have been like 600 um, v funds and I got them for like 350 or 450. I think it was 450, so 150 discount. Um, so it's definitely worth it. So keep an eye out on your, um, on your, wow, I cannot think your specials. I'm sorry. Um, other than that, that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover on this video. If you enjoy this video, please give us a like and subscribe, as well as follow me on Twitch. I will be streaming some Fortnite PVE uh, in the near future quite frequently probably. I do enjoy this game. I've been playing it a lot. Um, again, hope you liked it. Follow us on Twitch. And if you want to see more content of this nature, please give me comments on recommendations. Um, keep in mind I am a new streamer. I'm a new recorder. So I know it's kind of rough and I probably said um like 300,000 times. You don't need to spam me on. Oh, you said um so many times. I know. I know. Uh, thank you for your time. Have a good day.